Welcome to Andor Season 1, Episode 9, Thoughts. This episode is called Nobody's Listening. So, spoilers for basically everything in Star Wars up to this point, including this episode. And, yeah, so we, we see Dedra about to interrogate Bix, and... I gotta say, Dr. Borst is just intensely creepy, like, first, you know, you have that thing of, you know, Dedra says, you know, you can talk to me, or we we can, you know, rely on, on Dr. Borst, and the moment that she mentions him, he gives a little smile and a wave, just, you're in my net, are you a fish or a thief? And yeah, the ISB continuing to give heavy Gestapo vibes, which is excellent for the show. And yeah, when Dr. Gorst, you know, he's like smiling, being so friendly, makes it so much worse, you know, casually discussing this genocide, you know, this thing of, you know, so, I mean, I say was because, I mean, they were so resistant. Well, bottom line is, they make this very interesting noise when they die and you know they learned this because the the imperial the people who killed them were like really distressed by hearing these noises so they made sure that the recordings of you know and and they would like fiddle around with the change to make it especially painful to listen to just yeah And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, Cassian starts to cut through something or other, but he unfortunately has to stop. And yeah, so Vel is the you know, Leda considers her her aunt. And, you know, Mon does ask, you, you are going to see your mother, right? Because she's been worried. You know, so, yeah, I, I think some people had guessed, had theorized that Mon and Val were somehow related. And, you know, yeah, Mon knows she's a rebel, but she can't get any info out of her. And, I mean, she's basically, she doesn't name drop Luthen, but clearly she knows that there's a relationship there. And Vel just refuses to, to give away, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and in this episode, you know, apparently, I, I forget his name, but the Mon's husband told Leda that Tay and Mon used to be together. And I... I really worry that Leda is going to look at how much time Tay is spending with her mom and she's going to think that they're like, you know, that, that Mon is cheating on her husband and that's going to cause some problems, that's going to attract some attention or something. You know, and I mean, if, if Mon's husband finds himself genuinely believing that Mon is unfaithful. I mean, based on his characterization so far, I think there's a very serious threat that he would, you know, lie to the ISB and say, oh, you know, I think my wife is doing something for, for the rebels, you know, just, yeah. And... Yeah, Cassian asks Circus, you know, how many guards are in each level? Circus refuses to answer, and we see Dedra in meeting, and she does make some headway. They're still not convinced that she's right, but, you know, her, like, assistant, you know, chimes in with, no, no, look, the, you know, the, well, let's see, it was that thing that Cassian had shaved, that was something that you know, that was something that Bix said, and he says, you know, the Aldani rebels were clean-shaven, and, you know, this whole thing, so, yeah. And we find out 100 people were fried. Now, 
I forget, I'm not sure I've, in one of these videos, used the term collective punishment, but I do think it is very note noteworthy that that is what the Empire is employing here. You know, if, if your table was slow, you know, and there's, there's obviously, no matter how fast you go, there's always going to be one table that's slower than the rest. That's just, you know, of course, they can't, like, I, I don't even know, I mean, I guess... If all the tables were equally fast, they just pick one at random. You know, there's 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 always a penalty there, and the entire table gets punished, even though, like, you know, I n not to be too too uh, crass about it, but you know, sometimes if a um, if a group of people are struggling to complete something on time, it might mean that it's maybe just one or two people of the group that aren't pulling their weight. You know, everybody else can work extremely hard and still not be able to make up for that. But, but yeah, you know, I find it extremely difficult to believe that 100 people, not a single one of them, would do the, you know, put, put their arms behind their head and, and just stand still and, and be like, I'm not part of this. You know, I, even when, you know, we were later told that it, you know, they, they realized no one gets out. I get that that would definitely motivate. I, I'm not going to, if I was in that situation, I would definitely fight. I'm not. There's no, there's no doubt in my mind about that, but the idea that not a single person there was like, that can't be true. They, at some point, they must let us out, or at least not, you know, we know that some are in there for non-violent offenses. It takes a lot to, to actually attack someone, to, you know, even, even in an extreme situation. A lot of people are just not going to be willing to do that but they killed them all, uh, you know, and I, on one hand, I mean, yeah, they would probably think, well, we're just, you know, if we don't kill all of them, if one of them has heard the truth and goes to one of the other rooms, they, you know, they might tell some of the people in the other room that we're not letting people out. So it's just, you know, it's efficient. It's we're we're gonna we're gonna solve it now before it gets any, you know, it gets to be a bigger problem. And you know, Cass suggests to to Circus, the less, you know, if they, it's better if they think we don't know, you know. So so Circus, you know, shouts to all of them, you know, the the, it's it's just a rumor. Maybe it's true, but maybe it's not. So we're going to keep our heads down. And then he stops shouting and says at a softer tone, until we know for sure. You know, so it's not that he... Yeah, he is, he is becoming open to the idea of rebelling. Because this... Yeah, the idea that they will never get out. And it is also like... They honestly, the the um, the imperial people making the decision honestly thought, who cares? Well, yeah, we'll just we'll take one from room four, send them. Was it? Yeah, I I forget the details. Uh, let's see, it's not room two because that's where Cassian is. And anyway, yeah, you know, someone moved from one room to another, and they were like, that's you know, I, I, yeah, I guess. I'm not sure we were told here if it's that they recognized him from the, the bridge, maybe, or that he said, they told me I was going to get out, but now they put me in here, that you know, something. And, and yeah, like, the Imperial person making that decision was like, I mean, they're not going to be able to flee. No, we'll just, you know, like... You know, well, I mean, once the decision has been made that they're not going to let him out, they're not even going to, like, put him somewhere where no one is going to be aware that he... No, no, no. They sent him back, figuring, you know, whatever. Like, if, if they try to run, we will kill them. 
then we'll bring in another hundred people, whatever, you know, they're, they're, they're arresting people for being near where something happened, you know. And also, I didn't even, it, it occurred to me after I recorded the, the video for, I guess not, yeah, not last week, because he was in prison for that, but the one before, they said that he was arrested for, what was it, like destruction of imperial property or something. They actually arrested these people, like maybe maybe I'm wrong, it could be that I'm wrong, it could be, but that sounds to me like a euphemism for just like, maybe they sprayed some, some graffiti on, like, you know, to, to, as, a, as a form of fairly impotent protest, and someone spotted them, so they ran, and then they, you know, we don't know if all of them got choked, but certainly all, it seems like all of them got manhandled by these massive droids, you know, for graffiti. Because that, and, and that is, again, like, you know, the, the for example, during, Nazi, you know, in Nazi Germany, and, and in the, the occupied countries, yeah, it would take almost nothing, like, the tiniest little bit of, what's the word, like, um... If if you if you don't follow every single rule, they they would put you away, you know. And Cyril approaches Dedra, and you know he he really he speaks directly from the heart. But Dedra, you know she, to be honest, she shows remarkable restraint. The, you know he. Like, the moment that she realizes that he was waiting there for her, like, that, so many people would, at that point, like, guards, you know, arrest this guy, and he even grabs her arm, and she's, like, basically, and, it, yeah, I mean, we know how little she cares, she has no empathy for rebels at all. So it really is the fact that this guy is working for the Empire, and as, such as it is, you know, and he was of use. She did say, you know, you were of use to the Empire today. That's basically why she's not having him arrested. You know, she gives him warnings and just, yeah, you know, because he really, he, he wants meaning in his life. He just wants... And, and just, yeah, you know, and that's one of the problems with this kind of thing. Although, to be fair, you know, it's not only dictatorships. You know, there are also a lot of people in capitalist systems where they just, they feel like they have no meaning, you know. And, I mean, honestly, yeah, if, if he was living in present-day America, he'd probably be like an incel or something. And I, I like the detail that, you know, he he was promoted. Honestly, when he first said that he was promoted, I thought he was lying. But, you know, apparently, you know, Dedra, you know, no, she just gave him a clean bill of health. And he got promoted. And he's grateful to her. And she's like, whatever. That was like, you know, I just, it, it was paperwork, whatever. Who cares? You know, it's not a kidney sport. And... Yeah, the the I'm I I continue to be really he's he's a very interesting character and I I really don't know where he's going to end up and I find that very interesting. I'll interrogate remotely. Even ISB have to zoom into work sometimes. And Tay suggests Devo sh children to Mon, and it seems like the only way to avoid getting on the Empire's bad side, and it's, yeah, you know, that is, yeah, if, if you, the, the, I mean, we do know that she did actually secure money to, to finance stuff, but even innocent people, you know, I, I, and that was actually, yeah, I, I forget, um, might have been, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, 
plead the fifth and say, I, I do not recall who, but someone said, you know, the, the, yeah, it was apparently like there was a line in one of these Andor episodes where one of the privileged people said, you know, if you don't have anything to hide, you know, who, you don't have anything to worry about, it's fine that they're, you know, uh, what's the word? They are, um, uh, yeah, we're under surveillance, you know. And, yeah, I, I remember someone in, in one of their analysis videos talked about, you know, so that is actually the, the you know, that is an argument some people made when the, the Patriot Act was uh, made a law. And I forget if they... I, I, don't offhand think that they did say this, so I want to add something that, you know, for, for the people who, who buy those kind of arguments, and maybe even repeat them to other people, it doesn't matter if you have anything to hide, because either, either you have something to hide, and they're going to nail you for that, or you have nothing to hide, and they're going to make a big deal out of how boring you are, or they're just going to make something up. You know, it's, it's, there is no, yeah, sur surveillance, like, obviously, you know, if you have, if you're running, like, a um, convenience store, it makes sense to have a surveillance camera, and, you know, yeah, there are situations, but, like, this kind of, just putting people under surveillance without having reasonable, ah, not see, not reasonable doubt. That's that's in court. Um, cause for suspicion or what, whatever they're called. You know, they there used to be a standard that you had to adhere to, but yeah. And Rulof collapses. I think they did a really great job building up to this. He clearly was struggling. You know, even before this episode, actually, I I was mistaken. I thought that was that that was him committing suicide in, you know, I think that, was that last week's episode, but, yeah, ev evidently not, but, yeah, I think even the first time we saw him, we could tell that he, yeah, he was struggling, and, yeah, the doctor says he had a stroke, and that is some, you know, if you, you know, the, the, um, People of that age cannot work for, you know, it's 12 hour shifts. It's absolutely absurd. You know, day after day after day. And, you know, yeah, that, that is the kind of thing that happens that, that can lead to a stroke. And, yeah, there's nothing the doctor can do, so he euthanizes him. And finally, he agrees to answer. You know, they, they ask him. It's not the first time they ask him what happened on level two, and yeah, he he gives the clear answer. And I also I appreciate the detail that you know when when he arrives and he's like, okay, Ulaf, you know, he he pretty quickly determines that Ulaf cannot be saved. You know, he turns to the guard and says, I need a uh, basically a stretcher, you know, he, they, they're gonna need to carry him out, they, they can't just, they're, you know, they, they don't, there's no reason to bring, like, medical equipment to, to keep him stable where he is until they can move him, no, just move him, he's dead, you know, and the, the first time he says it, the guard's already, like, you know, it's on its way, you know, and I also noted, a guy just died near this guard, and he's like, whatever, it's, you know, they're gonna come pick up the body, stop whining about it, you know, it's just the, the complete lack of empathy, and, you know, yeah, this guard probably doesn't think of Olaf as a human being, and I think it's also, you know, a, a nice little bit of, um, you know, film language, we've had many close-up, close-ups of Olaf. We've heard his name, we've seen him interact with other characters. This guard that we as an audience are not supposed to empathize with, I don't think we get a single close-up of him. I, as, as far as I recall, he's always 
like far away in the frame, small in the frame. So we never feel like we, we can't really empathize with him, you know. If, you know, it would be very difficult to empathize with him, even if we did get them, but it heightens that effect. And, um, yeah, you know, after, you know, when, when the doctor decides he is willing to answer what happened on level two, and so he, you know, he, he turns to the guard again, I need a stretcher, you know, and the guard's like, it's on its way, you know, and he's like, I don't want to hear more from this guy. So he leaves, not thinking about, oh, wait, Maybe my resentment of these guys could actually be useful. Maybe they're trying to get me away so that because like the doctors like, I don't know how they're gonna react to this. They might freak out, which is understandable. So I'm gonna try to get us some some you know alone time here. And you know the guard does realize, oh, I think I might have screwed up. And he comes back. Why are they still here? You know, because because it's like if he's dead. I get why the doctor's here, because, like, as part of his job, why are the other two still here, you know? Because that is, you know, that's where it starts. If you leave them time to, and, and he knows, this doctor knows what happened on level two. These guys don't, so this is, you know, this could really be a problem. And, yeah, you know, they agree to leave. And Cassie asks Andy Circus again, how many guards on each level? And he answers, never more than 12. And never more than 12. I mean, was it, what was it, 50 or 100 of the prisoners on a level? And I mean, you can't, not, not absolutely every single one of them is going to be in, in completely amazing shape as we, we see with, with Olaf, but a lot of them are, because they're, like, lifting this heavy-ass thing, you know. I mean, yeah, some of the time they're just, like, they, they pull down the thing and they use it to drill and such, but once it's done, like, what is it? Is it maybe eight people or something have to lift this? I, it looks like it weighs, like, a couple of ton or so. It, it looks insanely heavy. Like, it's thick steel, you know, so, yeah a lot of them are gonna be able to, you know, so, so, yeah, and, yeah, I, you know, obviously, the, the floor is a, a problem, you know, they need to make sure that they knock out all these guards before a single guard can say, you know, oh, electrify the floors, you know, so, yeah, but, but the, the yeah, I, I have to admit, I was a little surprised, and not ne not a negative way. I continue to really love this show. I was a little surprised that you know they they kind of broke from the three episode arc thing with, with this one. You know, the first three episodes one arc, the second set of episodes also one arc. That would have fit with this episode being the end of this arc, but. Yeah, if for for them to you know like the jailbreak kind of thing, that is gonna they couldn't have really done that in these three episodes without really rushing. So I don't know. I guess maybe the last you know there's now three episodes left of the season. Maybe the second half of the season is gonna be a six episode arc. I'm you know I'm 100% okay with that. But just yeah, I. Th I think I have said everything. As usual, make sure to watch Jesse Gender's video on the episode. And yeah, that's that's absolutely everything. It's really, really difficult to wait an entire week between each of these episodes. But yeah, that's it for this video. I will be recording more videos before the week is over. So, hope to catch you then.